This is Ross Jones, your business coach with my weekly podcast show, Bold Business Bits, coming to you from Yorkshire. This is where I have a great conversation with a phenomenal female business boss. We share some of the bold stuff they do, lessons they've learned, adversities they've overcome, and the fun they have. And then I'll be dipping into my toolkit and sharing a top tip. Business can be lonely, so make sure you join us each week and be part of our show. Hello and welcome to Bold Business Bits podcast show. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Caroline Wilson of Hot Toddy. Hello, Caroline. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited. Yeah, I've wanted to have you on here for ages. So thank you for joining us today. So tell us a bit about, let's start by telling us a bit about what you do, your amazing business, Caroline. Well, um, I do um, social media training, speaking, webinars, one-to-ones, audits um, with any wonderful, magical, mini sort of micro business to small businesses, to organizations, charities. And yeah, I've been doing that really happily for the last 10 years now. It's incredible. Wow, 10 years. How's that time gone? So how did you get into it? What what inspired you to get into it? social media training? Um, Well, so when I worked in an office in London, I was in an event company and I was always the youngest person in the office. So I was got told, will you just run this for us? And I'm like, oh yeah, of course I can do that. So whether it was a Twitter account, Facebook, you can get started on LinkedIn, you know, I was always the person that everybody was like, oh, will will you just do that? And so I think I just got known when I was employed just the youngest person you'll know what to do you do that so I think that's how it happened and how I started my business was I'd moved back up north and I was having a milkshake with Deborah Goodall um, and she was a marketing consultant um, in a business that I worked in and she just was like you do this you really enjoy managing accounts this is when I managed accounts why don't you just do it for yourself or see if there's more people that want to do it. And I was like, everybody wants somebody to run their social media. So latterly, that is what I did. I wore very many hats from organic veg to, oh God, accountancy, (laughs) all plumbing sorts, horse boxes, you name it. I think there's quite not a business that I didn't help run their social media account in my early days. So that's, I suppose that's how it all started. Yeah. Over a milkshake in Easy World. Well, wow, over you could you could write a blog about that, or you probably have, have you? Over a milkshake in Easingwold. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, really funny now. I live near Easingwold. <laughs> it's come yeah, a so. circle. You've been a circle. So, uh, but it must be. I'm just think, interested in people who run other people's social media accounts and and the whole range that you just reeled off there. How do you manage to keep a different voice for each one? This is really interesting. So that's when. Oh, I've lost my voice. So that's when Deborah came in. So Deborah would create them a marketing strategy and I would stick to that and basically deliver that and work really closely with her. So we would always really in the like I said in the early days, I would always want to know who the tag audience is. Deborah would cover all that in a strategy and then I would sl- like slowly implement that. But it was really difficult. So we had keywords, we had chats on the board of what sort of words they did use, what words they didn't use. And it'd all be I'd sort of write it all up and then the client would okay that sort of spiel if you like but it always was quite true to who and what they were um but that was quite a lot of research in the early days to be able to make it sort of successful really to speak you're a little bit like a doctor in one sense because you're not allowed to say who you do your accounts you know like the doing for because obviously everybody wants to speak to somebody whether it's a clothes shop or a gift shop and you want to think you're talking directly to the owner don't you you don't want to think that they have possibly got help so it's sort of like a hidden art in the early days that's what I found um and you wore many many hats and you learned so many interesting things not that I don't know but um yeah it was fascinating the sort of random things you would learn and and can you just share this may be this may be another secret I don't know but in, in my experience, so I, I dabble a bit with social media. I, you know, it's not my favourite thing to do in the world. But how do you keep it up with all the changes, all the like the algorithms and all? The, they're always developing and redeveloping themselves. You know, every single day it seems. So how do you keep up with that? Or do you have to? Are you? Uh, do you have special channels or something? What? How do you keep up? With it? Oh gosh, I love this because I am really naturally really fascinated and nosy by this. So I have a whole Twitter list 
list of people sort of like my industry experts, people that, you know, obviously people like Jack Dorsey that used to run Twitter. I have all of those in a separate sort of list. I also really love podcasts. So I'm on one. It's brilliant. But I really, really love listening to podcasts. I YouTube quite a lot as well. Um, And I follow people. So my newsfeed is constantly full of inspiring, educational, interesting. I've curated my news feeds to feed the information that I really, really want to see. So I'd encourage anyone that's thinking, right, I want to learn something to go after some following accounts that's going to inspire level them up educate them so it is because I think we spend something like 90 minutes a day scrolling so you want that scrolling to be whatever platform really encouraging and beneficial to your business really um so that's what I I sort of pride myself on trying to keep it relevant and my new word for 2023 is vibrant so I have done a bit of a cull on all my subscriptions and who I follow and what I listen to culled it sort of out that if it's not vibrant and it's not going to help me I'm not going to I'm not going to look at it anymore because like I said 90 minutes a day is a lot isn't it yeah uh, really a lot that's very disciplined I love that so like a bit of discipline and and actually I think that's a that's a really good um word but should we make 2023 vibrant that's yeah, great I love it. Yeah. yeah if it's not vibrant my, it's not serving you get it away yeah mine was about creating new possibilities but I think I'm going to add that creating new vibrant possibilities <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. And what about now? So I know your 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 business journey has taken you different ways. So what are you up to right now? So I spend probably most of my time on Zoom, whether that's delivering webinars or it's doing one to ones or um, delivering back reports on people's audits for their social media. I've sort of really flipped it to more sort of like training elements because actually it's all really well and good us all having um, somebody do their social media and it just been sort of like an extra part of your business that you don't really have much involvement in it's not actually very good future proofing because if you don't know what's happening you don't know how to engage and you're not utilizing that tool and somebody else is doing it for you your return on investment can be quite low so I've always tried to when I had my children so like five years ago I flipped it all and I um, helped employ people or upskill people within the businesses or train the sort of the business owner to be able to run their own accounts because I think that has more legs and it's more authentic it's so much more genuine and who doesn't want to be in front of their target audience you know like that's just absolutely brilliant so that's what I do now I spend most of my time sort of showing people how they can do it and showing them giving them tips and tricks and upskilling I just think it's lovely Uh, really really exciting Um, I've just been on with a lady that um, mends and make do's all sorts of things with jeans and you know stopping clothes go to landfill so upcycles all sorts of clothes like that but that's just fascinating isn't it and just really really relevant so a lot more um, variety I think because I can do a lot more because it's obviously less time than 24-7 delivering somebody's social media accounts so Yeah. yeah and Obviously, with COVID, now the whole world's opened up because everybody's got Zoom. So a um, lot more opportunities again there. Yeah. And I, I, first of all, I should say, I just love how you do make you, you make social media sound vibrant and exciting, Karen. I, oh, I God. That. So what's not to love about social media is amazing. But then you talk, you mentioned the C word there. So mm. what happened to you during the COVID times and during lockdown and the pandemic and stuff? What was your experience of that? Well... I think what I saw online was with my um, target audience, with my colleagues, with people, that it was boom or bust. So I made this really, really, it isn't me, this decision, but I made a decision that actually I wouldn't promote anything to do with my business during COVID unless it was some fully funded program that I was delivering on or unless it was about grants or cheerleading for another business or raising money for charity. I just completely didn't do anything. I mean, I even had people asking if I was still in business or what was I doing? You know, and I was like, no, it's very, very much so still on business because obviously everything of mine just flipped online. But I didn't want to be saying, oh, it's okay for me. I've gone online. Yeah. Um, So So you're being being sensitive, basically. Very sensitive. But I didn't quite realize the extent of how long that would last for. But I think in terms of business growth, that made the most amount of sense to me to just have a pause. And like I said, cheerlead for other businesses, raise money. And what I did do is put the time that I would have 
been doing on my own social media. I created conversations, chatted away, but then I consciously um, went to do some training to be a Princess Trust advisor, so uh, volunteered. So I sort of thought that the biggest age group that was hit was that um, 18 to 25, and the Princess Trust helped that age group. So I thought that is where I want to be. Um, And I was only in my early 20s when I started my business, so I thought, actually, I want to give back. And I've had friends of mine that have had help through the Princess Trust with their businesses, so I thought, that's what I'm going to do. So that was sort of professionally but personally we saw quite a lot of movement so I have a little girl at the time she was two so obviously there was no help she couldn't really it was a little bit frowned upon to send them to preschool or nursery or whatever so we sort of kept them at home because also um Jo is a key worker, her dad, so he would go out and have to carry on working. And we were quite conscious we didn't want to bring anything to his staff. So we kept her at home. But what it meant was she was still a good napper. So I would push in the morning, like, three to six miles so I could do podcasting like listen to your podcast which was really uplifting could make work phone calls and sort of plan on my phone what I was going to do then in the afternoon she would sleep and I would be able to do meetings or deliver training or whatever and also I was pregnant again so I um, was I managed to actually work until days before, to be fair, because you're Zooming and I was just bouncing on a ball. So I was delivering (laughs) webinars and things. Um, It was quite, yeah, so it was quite, it was was quite good, actually. Um, So I was able to work quite a long time. Uh, And then people asked me before, because also, obviously, when you're having a baby, it seems to be a grand design special that you do up a house as well. So we were as well doing up a house. And I just said from like a work point of view, the pregnancy was quite high risk, they said they called it at the time. So I was in and out of hospital. And at one point, it was quite funny because I had to have Deborah lined up to deliver two webinars because I was supposed to be in hospital. Luckily, it didn't happen. But she was like, what do you mean? I was like, oh, they think I need to go in earlier. And it just means I can't do X, Y and Z. What are your thoughts? Can you plan that into your sort of like contingency plan? Um, Because I just told people I was having two weeks off for new kitchen I was <laughs> as well I was having a new kitchen the same time so I was like um and one person sort of a contract that I work on was a bit sort of like um how's your new kitchen I said oh yeah marvelous because obviously I was back after my two weeks um and then they said but did you have a baby and I said yes yes I did but it was quite a, a like a, a risky sort of pregnancy I didn't really want to come to work and talk about it so I just never said anything um, and she was quite shocked. She said, oh, I thought we had a really good relationship. I said, we do, but I don't need to come on. You don't have children. You don't want to hear about it. I don't want to talk about it. And to be honest, I didn't know that that baby was ever going to come, but little Rolo did come. And thank God, I was like, it just felt endless and very stressful. So coming to work was just a relief and just you no know, kitchen chat and just brilliant. <laughs> really, really good. So it was very busy lockdown for us. Very busy. And how how is Rolo? he's two now can you believe it yeah he's over two he's at preschool now yeah Peppa's at school so he's brilliant yeah he's absolutely oh god so full of energy and just like brilliant 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 um he has some little chickens so we have little chickens now and it just it's just brilliant he's full of mystery so what about so it sounds like you you uh you had like quite a busy busy lockdown then very busy very yeah. very busy yeah there was a lot going on um I'm really glad yeah really glad that the house is sort of 90 95 percent I don't think it'll ever be fully finished are they ever yeah. but that's sort of already and last year actually was the first year we didn't have anything major happening so I really got into gardening and so I was like oh I'm gonna really get into gardening so we did quite a lot of growing of things and planting and making plans in the garden I think it always it evolves doesn't it and I really really enjoyed that as well yeah and so what about a time of adversity in your life then or was that it your COVID experience yeah I suppose COVID there was quite a lot of pressure because there was no help still had my business to run uh, no childcare. also was pregnant with a quite high risk pregnancy seemingly so I think that was quite stressful and I think you run on your adrenaline don't you you just need to get through it and then you forget that actually it's quite a positive thing when it happens but you're like god what's going to go wrong and I think that was quite stressful um because it wasn't meant to work out that 
I was having a baby and moving house and having a new kitchen. We were supposed to have been in three months, but our builders delayed our um, all our work because they had asthma. And I was like, but you're going to work in a house where there's nobody working. You know, there's nobody else there. It's just your team. So they delayed our build for three months. So we were behind schedule. I suppose that was quite stressful. So then uh, we ended up moving with a newborn two weeks before Christmas. Wow. Um, which we laugh about now but I think you just get on do it don't you you don't see it at the time has been it's just what it is and you get on with it yeah maybe I've blocked out any other adversity I can't really think of it right now yeah no yeah the high vibe well that's what we need isn't it so how do you maintain so can you give share some tips then uh, Caroline how do you maintain your high vibe right well I think something that I do is I um I like to block work so reward myself so I like block working and I think right I've got an hour I've got to do x y and z I love a list I'm really into a list and I'm quite a routine person if that is possibly a thing so if I've got meetings booked they can only be at certain times so then that hits with my schedule so I can't be like oh is it a 10 45 or is it 10 15 no it's always going to be 10 o'clock so I'm quite a routine person that only uh, ebbs and flows a little bit because there's some webinars that I deliver that some at half nine so upsets my upsets me a little bit. But, you know, it is what it is. So I quite like that, that I am only available to book in the meetings and there is a little bit of flexibility, but not really. I quite like them at certain times in the day. The other thing that I do is I'm quite, um, and I know you're into, you're big into running, but I'm a big, I go to the gym at least twice a week. I also like want to be outside at least once a day. I want to do a walk, get my steps in, be outside. Um, and I've also started because obviously gymming is quite good, but you might not do a lot of stretching. So in the last, I think I've done it 18 months now, um, I yoga as well. Yeah. So um, I add in yoga to my week. But I think mm-hmm. having that balance outside of work and inside of work, and I'm quite strict um, with, I like my routine. And I also don't, I also sort of, have a little bit of a leeway now with my emails I'd want to be on them all the time and just making sure that it's empty and my box is whatever I made peace with the fact that's never going to happen and when you're delivering webinars or workshops or anything like that you can't be excuse me can't be on your emails all the time and so I've sort of said to people please allow like up to three working days obviously I'll endeavor to do it quicker but I can't be delivering a whole day workshop and then deliver, you know, replying to you at eight o'clock at night. Whereas before I would have done that. I just would have been like, oh, I've, I've got this to wrap up. But now there's a cut off because I want to go to the gym. Got my gym booked in. I'm not going to let people down and I want to do that. And I think that balance for me is really important, having strict boundaries, which I don't think were in place. Don't get me wrong. I'm still working on that, but I have since September last year taken my work email off my phone, which yeah. is absolutely massive. Oh, I've done the same thing. It was inadvertent because I because uh, I got a new phone and I don't know how to put it on there because it just it just keeps going around in circles. But actually, and I was going to get it fixed, but actually, I'm thinking no, no. That, if I if I leave my laptop in my office and I go home, I can't actually access my emails, which is amazing. Yeah. And I was speaking to somebody as well this week and they said, but what work are you actually doing? It's not groundbreaking work. It's just reactive work. So why do you need to do that at eight o'clock at night and ruin your night? And I was like, God, you are so right. And I know, but I think that has really, really helped because I was looking at the emails. Then you're thinking about work yeah. uh, and then you respond and then you're like, oh, it doesn't look very good because it's not got my proper signature. And, you know, like I was going through all of this. And then the trail wouldn't be right when you're trying to focus back what what happened here. And then the trail isn't right. So I think just stick to your laptop. I tell you who has got their boundaries completely in check. Deborah, you ask Deborah about boundaries. You need to get her on a podcast because she's like, 100% that does not happen. No, yeah, she's really, just yeah. brilliant on her boundaries. Yeah. And she's like, that's just, she just looks at you like you're crazy. I know you've done quite a lot of work with Deborah, but she yeah. does. She's just like, no, that won't happen. No, she doesn't even have social media apps on her telephone. I'm like, what do you do on it? And she's like, I ring people. I'm like, wow. <laughs> wow mind blown you do what and she's like yeah she's mean to speak to people yeah yeah and I'm like your di- what about your diary no that's not on my phone don't be you know like she almost looks at you like are you ridiculous no this yeah. is my home phone it's for ringing and that is it yeah. um completely yeah I just think god I aspire to be that good well we're we're, we're all work in process we work in progress <laughs> but one thing I just wanted to end with um Caroline and well I hope you still do this 
because I learned something from you. Is I remember that you used to make cakes on a Saturday. Oh gosh, yeah, I still do that. Yeah, because yeah. if I remember, it was like advice from your mother, so to just yeah. break from work because you were such a sort of workaholic at the time. So as well, I don't really eat well. Don't tell my husband would say differently, but I don't really eat cake. So I and I know you didn't. You just gave them to the people, but I decided that I would always, based on your what you said, I always make soup on a Saturday. Oh, I love the that. whole process of chopping vegetables, you know, getting different flavors. So I got that from you. So I just wanted to ask if you still do cakes and yeah. Oh gosh, yeah, it's because it's such a routine now. Every Saturday, the children obviously make cakes. We've done mince pies. We've done mince pie meat with cookies. That was delicious. I even made a Christmas cake. Um, yeah. that was really, really good. I've still got half of that left actually. Um, but yeah, and um, yeah, so much so. I just think I don't even think of it as an extra thing anymore. Clearly, because I completely forgot. But yeah, and I'm making a cake for our village actually because they're having an old people get together. You know. Like like a coffee morning thing and yeah. I was asked would I make a cake 100% so I've got that to do this afternoon because it's tomorrow so yeah oh. I bake cakes so many cakes that's why we have our chickens um yeah so that's why I have my chickens so I have a supply of eggs because I can oh, go wow. through like 24 eggs a week just in baking but yeah and I still give it away I usually half everything I make and give it away to family or friends um yeah or to my local village which is lovely so um, I'm really really pleased about that but yeah I do still bake I'm getting better at cooking that's my new thing I try to do a new recipe each week but that is also something I'm I'm not brilliant at it but Joe's so good I just think oh I'll leave it to you you're just so good and he does it so naturally and he's so brilliant at it and you know I'm like sous chef I do the prepping and the cleaning uh yeah. nine times out of ten but yeah he's brilliant at cooking so I'm just feel a little bit like I need to be better for my children if he's not there which is quite yeah. rare but I was like I do I'm getting there with cooking getting there Getting there. I think that's what we're all doing in life, isn't it? We're getting there in a vibrant way. Oh, brilliant. Oh, I love chatting to you. And I'm really yeah. pleased you like my vibrant word. Yeah. It's amazing. Thank, thank you so much for coming on. And uh, I've, loved, I've loved speaking with you, Caroline. So thank you so much. You are welcome. And I'll speak to you soon. In our conversation... We talked about how Caroline maintains her high vibe by setting boundaries in her life. She talked about being very routine. And setting boundaries is so important in business, is it not? Because being in business, there's always so much to do. We could just spend all of our days, every day, doing our business. But that comes at a big price. It ends in burnout, actually, because we do it at the detriment of everything else in our life. We lose our friends, our family, we neglect our health and well-being, we don't. We stop doing our hobbies, we drink too much coffee, we don't get enough sleep. All of these things inevitably lead to burnout and stress and that's not good for yourself or your business or your clients. So how do we set boundaries and what are they? Well, boundaries are really a line, aren't they? They're a line between things. So a line between your business and your personal life. And this was really... It came to a big thing during the lockdown process where people were sitting at home, maybe we were uh, homeschooling our kids. And where did boundaries, what happened to our boundaries then? Really went out the window because we were surrounded by our kids and being at home, we, we had all the distractions of being at home, as in the ironing needs doing, the washing needs doing, whatever was going on right then. So I think the lockdown period really shone a light on the need for firm boundaries. And boundaries are about being firm. We need to be disciplined. We need focus. We need consistency. All the usual character traits of what it takes to be successful in business. So they are aligned between the different aspects of our life. And it's not difficult to set them, it's just we need to stick to them, that's the thing. So scheduling time is the easiest way to set your boundaries. You declare when you're going to do things, put them in your diary and stick to it. So you set some time, this is when I'm going to do my my morning walk, this is when I'm going to go for my run or go to the gym, this is the time I'm going to uh, eat my meals, this is the time I'm going to play with my kids, all of these things. And then for business, this is the time I'm going to make my phone calls. This is the time I'm going to reply to emails. This is when I'm going to meet with my clients. All of these things just need to be scheduled into our diary and then we need to stick to them. But of course, there are boundaries, 
nobody else knows about them until we tell them. So we need to make these public. So for our clients, we could set expectations, couldn't we? When we start working with them, we could say, look, you can re- you can get in touch and I promise I will respond to you within 24 hours or whatever it is your, your time limit is. Or you could say, we're going to meet at two o'clock every Tuesday. You, know, you, you set the expectations up front then, don't you? And if people aren't necessarily yet your client, you can set expectations maybe with an automated message with your email. So we talked about the thing about emails. That when people send an email, do they expect a response straight away? Or can we manage their expectations by letting them know in advance? Maybe we set up a, an automatic rule on our emails. So when somebody sends an email, they get a reply back saying, thank you so much for your email. I'm really, I'm, I'm really pleased you got in touch. I will respond to you within 24 hours. Or I look at my emails at four o'clock every afternoon. Whatever it is that you do, set the expectations in that way. And you can do it with your friends and family as well. You know, you agree with your kids. Look, I'm going to play with you at this time. I'm going to take you to ballet at this time. And with your friends, you know, I'm going to be available to you this time. So you, you, you just let other people know what your boundaries, your rules are, if you like. But the other thing to be wary of and to be very aware of, especially if you're somebody who just says yes to everything, because when you say yes to everything, like me I have done in the past, when you say yes to everything, you can end up with double bookings in your calendar. And then you have to go back and apologise and rearrange. And although that's OK once, if you do it consistently over and over again, you're going to annoy people and lose credibility as well. So be careful when you're saying yes to things learn to say no as well you know somebody might want to meet with you today but actually you're too busy you've got your day is full so rather than saying yes and trying to squeeze them in say well I can meet with you tomorrow I can meet with you at 10 o'clock next Tuesday it's all about communicating your boundaries to people and being firm with yourself to stick with them so I hope that's been useful thank you so much for listening to our podcast today this has been Roz Jones please subscribe to our show and, and share it with others and I look forward to Have you listened to the next one? Bye for now. This has been your Ross Jones Bold Business Bits podcast show. If you'd like any further information about anything we've discussed today, please just get in touch. Go to businesscoachingyorkshire.co.uk. Please join me again next week when I'll be speaking with another phenomenal female business boss with Bold Business Bits. And remember to subscribe to my show. Thanks for listening.